Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another review for you guys today. And as per usual, we are returning back to these reviews with a Chelsea W. That's us unbeaten in 13 games now and this streak just doesn't seem like it's going to end anytime soon. And the one big difference between now and all the other reviews we've done, Chelsea are sitting at the top of the Premier League as it stands right now. We might not be holding it for very long because we need Arsenal to beat Spurs and that doesn't seem very likely and we also need Wolves to get a result against Liverpool and that might be even less likely or maybe more likely depending on the form of both teams but it's very likely that we're only holding on to this spot for about 12 to 24 hours but let's enjoy the view for now guys it's nice up here you get a lot of nice treats up here as well and it's only a dress rehearsal when we come back for it the second time we're going to come back and hold first place down as our own but until then for tonight celebrate because we're top of the league we had a very good match against a very tough lead side that we knew were going to cause us different sorts of problems to what the previous teams that we've been facing under the 4-3-3 did but I think we handled the challenge excellently. We're going to go into it, in, into it in this review. But before I start, as usual, hit that like button. Press that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button as well. And let's go straight into the match review. Chelsea 3 leads 1. Now, looking at the lineup before we talk about the game. A lot of changes as a lot of players return back to starting lineup after being rested against Sevilla. It was only Edward Mendy, Kai Havertz and Olivier Giroud who started both games this week. And... Leeds definitely gave us a scare. I mean, they scored first in the first minute or two of the game. It was a bit of indecisiveness from Edouard Mendy. The first time we've seen that from him this season, but it was also the only time we've seen that from him this season because he was at his usual best for the rest of the match. So we're not going to delve too much into it. They caught us lacking. Patrick Bamford got a goal. We knew he was likely to get a goal anyway. He definitely had a point to prove at Chelsea because we barely given him a chance anyway. So it really just is what it is. But it looked very obvious early on that it was going to be a game of a lot of chances for both sides. Uh, Leeds had their chances. They had a couple chances to even make it 2-0. Chelsea had a couple chances as well. Olivier Drude could have had a few goals early on. He was judging the crosses very well and creating a lot of problems for the Leeds defenders. There was that incident with Timo Werner where he ends up clearing an Olivier Drude header, which we're not going to speak too much about. It just looks really embarrassing. It's a bit of an L, but you know what Timo Werner's like. He's going to have those sorts of games where he drifts in and out of the game. He's usually at his best when he's got space to run around with his pace and everything, but I feel like sometimes his ball control does let him down. Sometimes his dribbling does need to improve a little bit too many, a little bit at times. But I also think sometimes we don't really help ourselves because we're playing Olivier, we're playing Timo Werner all across that front three, and we're not giving him anywhere to sit in. Every time we play him in different positions, we're asking different responsibilities of him, which is going to have an impact on his end performance. He's obviously better off up front. He's obviously better off with space in behind. But he always seems to have an impact in these sorts of games anyway. So you can't really say too much about it. He'll drift in and out of these games and then he'll end up getting a goal or, a, or an assist. Which is just typical Timo Werner at this point. It shades the Newcastle game as well. But if he's racking up the goals and the assists, I really can't complain too much. But like we said, going into the first half, plenty of chances going around at both ends. We were caught lacking sometimes. There was a lot of chances coming down that right-hand side and Reese James and Hakim Ziyech were linking up excellently. And it was their link up again, which is what ends up with us finally getting level. I think around 30 minutes in when Reese James and Hakim Ziyech linked up again well on that right-hand side. Hakim Ziyech dragging the right winger and the right back out of position to leave Reese James with a lot of space to deliver across to Olivier Drew that is near post. And you know exactly what Olivier Drew is going to do when he gets that near post. He's going to, he's going to lick it straight into the back of the net and that put it level and for the rest of the first half it was still a cagey affair we're struggling to find ways out of, out of Leeds' as press, but there were some areas where we're also improving as well. It's a massive 50-50 battle in the midfield. Credit to Kante and N'Golo. Uh, credit to N'Golo, Kante and Mason Mount, who both had amazing performances. And we're going to delve deeper into it in the player ratings, but ending at half-time as well, it was a tough cagey affair for both sides, but 1-1 seemed like the fairer chance. Second half came through and for the most part Chelsea dominated. I think we were the much better side going into the second half. We seemed to have settled down a little bit more. Kai Havertz and Timo Werner still weren't at their best. I think with Kai Havertz he definitely see didn't seem that sharp. And in hindsight it might not have been the right decision to start him. But 
hindsight is always 2020. Based on Kai Havertz's game against Sevilla, it makes complete sense why I would have started him. And we've already said that we have four midfielders on amazing form and one of them is going to be left disappointed on the bench. But it also means that they're a great option coming off the bench. And, and Mateo Kovacic came on and he just assimilated brilliantly into that match. He was excellent all throughout the game. He helped us progress further up the pitch with a lot more intent. I think the end ball was a lot better off from Mateo Kovacic and we were starting to dominate phases of the game a lot more. And the second goal just looked like it was coming. It also looked a little bit worrying from both sides, but we did look like the more dominant side in both areas of the field. And it was another Mason Mount corner that led to the second goal. And it's Kurt Zuma with his fourth Premier League goal this season. I think we've scored six goals from corners this season. I think now it's seven. I saw the stat coming up on Sky Sports. And the majority of them have come off Kurt Zuma. And we've known as soon as he gets, the, as soon as he judges the timing of these crosses a lot better, he'd be an absolute cheat code from corners. And it happened yet again today. I think that's double the goals that Bamiyang has today. But I'm not going to hold too much on the slander and other clubs, especially because we do need Arsenal to get a win tomorrow. So I'm going to keep myself a little bit quiet. But Mason Mount was vital throughout that game. He got another assist to his name and him in that number eight position is excellent. That The willpower that he showed throughout the 90 minutes, he never stopped. He never stopped. And especially playing against Leeds, I think it was expected that he was going to have a good performance because we know the history between him and Leeds from back in his days at Derby with Frank Lampard. And you could tell that was in his mind because he was definitely getting a bit aggy with a few of the Leeds players. But... As the second goal came through, Leeds tried to attack a little bit more, but I think we were a lot more solid by that point. Plus, we could play a much more calmer style of play, knowing that we now had the lead. It looked a bit worrying towards the last 10 minutes. They were over committing with a few more players, but that also did come to their disadvantage because Chelsea were able to counter-attack and they were able to get that third goal from Christian Pulisic and the Timo Werner assist, which, like he said, he'll drift in and out of games, but he will always pop up with a goal and an assist eventually. So you can't discredit Timo Werner too much. Moving on into the player ratings, and we're going to start off in goal with Edouard Mendy, who was unlucky for the first goal, but other than that, there's not really too many complaints for me. I thought it was, he still did well with crosses. He still did well with a couple of saves from Patrick Bamford shots, which weren't really that threatening after the first goal, but there was a couple decent chances, which I think he did well for anyway. So I'm going to give him a seven. Other than the first mistake, it was just a typical Edouard Mendy performance. Moving on to Reese James and... Out of all the players I have to give him man of the match, he is without a doubt the best right back in the league. And the thing is, it isn't even hype anymore. It was another solid performance from him. He was literally a brick wall on that right-hand side. I remember seeing a moment where Patrick Bamford tried to body him with two hands and he just dashed him onto the floor with one. And that just speaks volumes about the strength of Reese James and him going forward as well. His crosses are so dangerous and with Olivier Giroud there, finally there was somebody to put some respect on his crosses and he finally got an assist to his name because he, we've been waiting for it for ages with him. He had another amazing performance from him and this isn't hype anymore. He is the best right back in the league. He is clear of Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's clear of Wan-Bissaka. He's clear of anybody that you tried to put in front of him. He is the best right back in the league anymore and it's facts. Another man the match performance from Reese James. Thiago Silva... Again, passed out the back so well and so many good chances were coming out of him. There was so many chances for us to turn possession forward and to try and create an attack on Leeds. His composure was also needed today. Leeds were causing us a lot of problems and I think last season we would have started having panic stations in that attack and we needed someone of that composure like Thiago Silva. So it was another strong performance from him. It's an 8. Kurt Zuma, I'm going to give a... I'll probably give him an 8 as well, just for the goal. His recovery tackling was needed as well with some of Leeds' counter-attacks, but I thought it was another strong performance from him too, so I'm going to give him a 7. Ben Chilwell, I thought it was a bit quiet from him. No complaints really, but I didn't really see too much impact from him, but I thought he had a solid performance overall, so I'm going to give him a 7. N'Golo Kante. Now, I can finally put my hands up and say, cool, I was wrong about N'Golo Kante in the lone DM role. I wanted to see how this worked out against the pressing side. And the first half, I did feel like he was getting dragged out of position a little bit too many times, but I also thought he was trying to come and try and defend Kai Havertz, who had a much quieter game than both the midfielders did. But the one thing I didn't take into account is how much he had improved under Maurizio Sarri and how much Sarri had helped him get so much better going forward because his composure under the press was so good. His short passing was a lot excellent. 
He had a lot of chances going forward and on both sides of the pitch and his ball progression was excellent today. He also had the most ball recoveries, the most tackles won and the most interceptions and tackles won and his passing was two of my biggest worries against the pressing side and he was excellent on both of them today. So you know what? I finally seen what I needed to. I can hold my hands up. I'm happy to take the L on this. You can tell me I was wrong in the comment section all you want because I promise you I'll air it anyway because I don't mind being wrong. This means to me that now we don't need a DM as much as we as much as I thought we did. We still could do with one because the depth would be nice. We need two DMs to manage off anyway. So that just means there's another option for the DM role. But yeah, now I feel a lot more sold, a lot more confident on N'Golo Kante in the DM role. Eight for him. It was an amazing performance. Mason Mount, again, another eight. Most chances all game, mo most crosses all game. Had the assist for Kurt Zuma as well, and he was all over that midfield. It was another reason for why we started to take dominance over it throughout that second half. So he's going to get an eight from me. Kai Havertz, a bit slow today, not really at his best. Uh, maybe should have been rested in hindsight, but again, hindsight is 2020, so I'll give him a five and just leave it at that. He didn't seem sharp, so it just is ways. He's still coming back to full match fitness, so I'm not going to complain too much. Hakim Ziyech, it, it's a shame. For now, I'll give him a six because he was only around for a small period of the game, but for that period of the game, he was brilliant. Him and Reese James are causing all sorts of chaos on that right-hand side. And he had a lot to do with that first goal as well. So he gets a six from me. Timo Werner has to be a five. He does need to be a bit more clinical. We could have killed that game off a lot earlier. Especially in the second half with a few of the chances there. Good to end with an assist at least. So I'll give him a five. Olivier Giroud, it's another eight. It was another amazing performance. He enjoyed the physical battle with the Leeds defenders. He was another threat from corners as well. And... Deserved another goal and he got another goal, so it's an eight from me. Moving on to the substitutes, Christian Pulisic, he had great close control on the ball, but he struggled a bit with Leeds deep defensive line, but it was good to get a goal at the end, so I'm going to give him a six. Kovacic, and again, another brilliant addition. I've already spoken about how he suited this game perfectly, so I'm going to give him a seven. And Tammy Abraham just had that one missed chance, but other than that, weren't really too much, so I'll give him a five. But other than that, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know whether you agree or disagree with any of my opinions. Until then, take care and up the chill.